Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video for those of you that might be using these in the hobby, capacitors, but not be sure what it's all about. If you have had noise in your analog video system and you've been posting in the forums or reading posts, you'll see lots of people say, oh, put a cap on it, capacitor. So I was actually helping somebody with an issue a couple of weeks ago now, and it's quite an experienced modeler. And one of the issues was noise. And we ended up putting a capacitor on it and it improved things. And he wasn't sure what capacitor was. So this isn't necessarily something that's widely understood. So I thought I'll make a quick video to explain it if you're not an electronics engineer. So a capacitor is kind of a funky thing. What it is, is two plates held apart by an insulator. And as the current initially flows through a capacitor, when you apply a voltage, what happens is those two plates, one gets charged positively and one gets charged negatively. Once they are fully charged, and I'm simplifying it a little bit here for the purpose of the video, once they are fully charged, then the current stops flowing. Now they're available in a couple of different ways. You can either have them that look something a bit like this, where there's two very small disks of conductive material on each side of some kind of insulator, or it could be two very long, thin strips. If you think of it like aluminium foil, two of those with some kind of insulator between them, and they're wrapped up and put inside a little can. And these little cans are typically the ones that we tend to play with more in the hobby. The cans tend to have a higher capacitance. Capacitance is measured in something called farads and typically we're talking about nano or pico farads very small about amounts of capacitance i think i was told a long time ago that uh, the whole capacitance between the sky and the ground is about one farad so you know pico and nano farads is still a reasonable amount and very useful in electronics now, one of the things I talked about in another video was how that little snap or spark that you get when you plug in higher voltage batteries, so 6S batteries, when you plug them in, you get that little snap. That is actually the current rushing into the circuit and charging all the capacitors almost instantly. And to charge the capacitor, it pulls the current that's limited only by the resistance of the wires between the capacitor and the battery terminal. And that then once it's charged, will sit there with its charge on those two plates. But that means that that charge is available to do some funky stuff. And a capacitor has a couple of other tricks up its sleeve. So as I've talked about already, that initial snap is the current, electrical current rushing through the capacitor and charging each of those plates, one positive and one negative. And that then becomes a little reservoir of electrical charge, rather like a little battery. You can think of it like that. And that means that if the voltage dips in the circuit, then the capacitor will discharge into the circuitry to retain that voltage level, essentially smoothing things out. And that's part of why we use a capacitor, because that little reservoir is available to top up the voltage. However, with very small capacitors, it's not a real lot of charge and that dissipates very quickly. But with larger capacitors, that reservoir is a little bit bigger and has a little bit more electrical energy that it can pump back into the circuit around it. There is one other incredibly useful feature of a capacitor. Because as the current flows, we get the positive and negative charged plates. And once they're charged, the current can't flow any longer. That means that direct current, like we have on batteries, can't flow through a capacitor once it's charged. However... AC current or currents that's going backwards and forwards can get through a capacitor. So it's also very useful for signal conditioning and those things too. So if you have a large spike in a circuit, it not only is kind of protected by the charge that's already on that capacitor, but it also will go through the capacitor and be rooted to ground because it's actually pulling the charge in each direction. And when the charge is steady in a DC state, then it can't go through. So DC current can't go through a capacitor, AC current can. And again, that's very, very handy. So why do we use it in the hobby? Well, I'm guessing you're already figuring that out. Putting a capacitor on something like a flight controller or an ESC is going to help you out in two ways. First of all, it provides that reservoir of electrical energy. So if there is a slight dip as things happen within the power circuits, then that energy can flow back and 
top that up. But also, if there are any nasty AC spikes or noise, then those can go through the capacitor and be rooted to ground without affecting the DC voltage. Now, if you've ever seen a circuit diagram with a capacitor in it, you'll notice that capacitor is normally in series with a resistor. And that is normally how they're used because the resistor limits that huge current that flows into the capacitor initially to charge it up and then also kind of limits the current that comes back out if it needs to discharge into the surrounding circuitry. However, we don't tend to use them in the hobby like that. We apply them directly to the positive and negative leads of whatever power supply we're interested in. And that then is there to soak up that AC element, that noise, but also to provide that little reservoir of power too. And there is a third kind of capacitor that you might bump into. They're very small and they tend to be used on PCBs and they have an incredibly small amount of capacitance, but they still have the same characteristics. They store a little bit of charge and they will let AC current through. So my pro tips for using a capacitor is if you get one in the box, always put it on. It's not going to hurt anything and it is going to provide the a little bit of help that you might need to avoid some noise, but also provide that little reservoir of power that can be handy. Capacitors are rated for two things. The first is the amount of capacitance they have measured in farads. And the second is the voltage. 50 volt capacitors are quite common where we use them in the hobby. That's way above the kind of voltages that we're going to play with unless you're using 12S and 14S very large UAV systems. But for most of us in the hobby using up to 6S, 50 volts is going to be fine. Be aware that there's a right way and a wrong way to install them. As you can see here on the side of the can, there is this stripe, and that stripe is on the side that goes to the negative terminal of the battery. Always install them the right way round, and then they'll work better for you. And my final little bit of advice is because the capacitor stores charge, once you unplug the battery, sometimes capacitors can retain that charge for many minutes. So be careful of that. If you're using something like a 6S system and then you unplug it and then you're playing around with a soldering iron or metal tweezers, be super careful. Don't short those contacts out. My advice would be if you have a lot of capacitors in a model or in a circuit, unplug it and leave it. 15, 20 minutes for all the capacitors to gently self-discharge before you start poking around with anything metal because otherwise you might find a nice spark. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.